Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Empowerment Global Online Ministries on today. Well, we are truly excited to have an opportunity to minister and to pour into the lives of God's people. Uh, we're just excited today. Happy Saturday to each and every one of you all as we embrace our championship season. As we continue to walk in our championship season, uh, we are now live on Zoom as well as our Facebook and uh, the replays will be on Facebook as well as YouTube. Um, go ahead and share this out. Those on YouTube, go ahead, like, comment, share our page um, as we continue to build our online community. And so uh, let's go ahead and pray. Once you all have shared this out, whether you are on um, Facebook or whether you're out on uh, any of the uh, social media sites, let's, let's go ahead and see what thus says the Lord. And um, I'm truly excited, man, to see what the Lord has to say on today. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Uh, we honor you for your presence. We honor you for your word. Father, we honor you for the atmosphere that's been set and that's been established. And I pray that I disappear and that you appear and that you have your way like never before. Daddy, I ask that you speak with clarity, simplicity, but most of all with your anointing. Holy Spirit, we activate you to do what you do best. And that's to speak with precision, speak with accuracy, speak to the hearts of your people. And so, Father, I pray that our lives are changed. Mindsets are shifted. Babies are activated. Purpose is activated. And that, Father, that we walk according to your word. We live according to your word. We lead according to your word. And we're empowered according to your word. So, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you glory. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I pray that you amen. all amen. are doing wonderful today. As you all know, um, we've been teaching what? The championship season, right? We've been teaching on the championship season, and um, I'm excited about this championship season. You know, our foundational text is out of Genesis 26, verse 12. Uh, what really is verse 1 through 5, and the results are in verse 12. And uh, one of the things I just want to encourage us all, even as we walk in this championship season, even as we walk and embrace uh, this championship season, um, the, the key of winning in this championship season is following the instructions of God, following the game plan of God, uh, doing what God has called us to do. And, um, you know, we, we as we taught in the first quarter of the year, what we really discussed and we shared report about writing the vision down, including God in the game plan, asking God for his wisdom on our game plan. What is the direction of the Lord? You know. One of the things it talks about in Jeremiah 29, uh, it says in Jeremiah 29 that God has a thought. He has a he has an he has a plan for us. He has a plan with us with an expected end and a future of hope um, and peace. And and if, if God is saying he has the plan for us, it makes so much sense to include God in the plan. It makes so much sense to bring God into the plan. And so when we bring God into the plan, um, God's going to give us downloads. See, what we see, we only see just here in the in the micro. But God says, I'm trying to expose you to the macro. I'm trying to expose you to the macro. So, so don't get so caught up in the micro. So see, the micro will have you uh, 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 thinking small minded. But God says, I want you to get so caught up in the macro where you're no longer thinking small minded. But you're thinking that you're looking at the big picture. Am I talking to somebody? And so when you are, when we focus on the game plan, uh, God says, if we follow it, then we will walk in a season. Not only will we reap in the same year that we that we sowed a hundredfold, but God says, I will bless you in a place that you will prosper and that you will continue prospering until you become prosperous. Uh, uh, one of the things that God shared with me the other day, I was 
Um, I was I was pouring in, I was sharing with somebody and then God gave me revelation. Uh, and then we'll get into we'll get into the text and actually lines up with what we talked about last week. Um, as a matter of fact, we're going to pick up from what we talked about last week. Um, but one of the things that God shared with me, uh, Avivo, was the moment that you win a championship. The moment that you win a championship, they always at that point have to refer to you as a champion. Nobody can take away from you the moment that you win a championship. Nobody can disassociate champion in your name. They, they, they can't, they have to connect the, the, the champion to the name. Why? Because watch this championships create a legacy. Champions, championships create and put a stamp on your legacy. Michael Jordan won six rings, but the moment that he won his first one uh, many years ago, every time you mention his name, you have to mention that he's a champion. Larry Bird won a championship many years ago, but every time you make mention of his name, you have to acknowledge that he's a champion. And so the moment that you become and walk in your championship season, I don't care what the enemy does at this point. They cannot, they can slander your name. They can dog you out. They can run over you, lie on you, whatever. But at the end of the day, they still have to connect the dots and call you a champion. And the moment that Jesus died on that cross and got up on that third day, just for you, God says, that's the moment you became a champion. God. And you, the, the moment that you believed and you acknowledged and you confessed that, 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 that he is the Lord, that's the moment that you became a Christian. That's the moment you became a believer. And nobody can take that away from you. And so I want to encourage you right now that you are walking in your championship season. Now, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about walking in being a multi having multiple championships. Woo. That that remember there's levels to this championship season. There are levels to this championship season. There are levels to this. Somebody put that in the chat. There are levels to this championship season. So last week, turn your Bibles. If you those that got your Bibles, let's go to Genesis 22. This is where we left off last week. I'll recap just a little bit of last week. I'll recap just a little bit of last week. And what I also what I want to share with you all, when you become a champion, you walk with a different level of authority. You, you walk with a different level of authority. Blessings, Tisha. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the birthday love. <laughs> you, 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 here's the thing. When you, um, you, you walk with a different level of authority. When you walk in your championship season, you know, one of the things my apostle says, he says is all right now, he's been doing a teaching on the anointing and the authority. So when you understand your anointing, watch this, you understand your authority. And what's happened is the enemy has liked us so much when we lose sight that we're champions. We lose sight that we're victors. And what happens is when we lose sight that we're victors, guess what? We walk as a victim. But God says when you're a champion, you can't nobody take that away. You can sell your rings. You can give your rings away. You, you can do all of these things. But God says that you are a champion. The moment that you decide that you want to become a champion, the moment that you start having your victories and there ain't no devil in hell can take your titles away from you. You are a champion. And so even when we're even when we're teaching, some of us can't even put it in a chat and say that I'm a champion. This is my championship season. The reason why is because we just don't believe it. We haven't we haven't processed the thought that this is my championship season.
And I want to encourage you that it is time for us to walk, get your authority back, get your authority back, get your authority back and walk in being the champion that God has called you to be. So, so now levels to this, levels to this, levels to this. So, so last week we talked about um, uh, uh, when you're blessed from following God's game plan. When you watch this, you win your championships when you follow the game plan of God. So last week we talked about how God told Abraham, I need you to go sacrifice Isaac. I need you to take your first child, your only child. Even though, son, even though Abraham, I, I told you that you were going to be the father of many nations. Abraham said, well, I don't even have a child. At the age of 75, 78, 90, whatever it was, God said, he, he said, Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. Abraham said, I don't even have a child. How can I be a father of many nations? My wife and I, we old in age. And God said, you're going to have a child. And God and Sarah laughed. I mean, not God. Abraham and Sarah laughed because they couldn't consume. They couldn't process that God was going to make them champions. They could not process. They couldn't fathom in their natural mind. How in the world can I be a champion? And my record says I lost. I have a losing record. And, and my scoreboard says I have a losing record. And my scoreboard says my credit score is this. My bank account says that, that, that I'm this. And you're telling me I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to be a million. I'm going to be this. And I'm going to be that. I'm going to be a champion. God, you must not have been paying attention to my life. God, am I talking to somebody? You, you must not have been watching the details of my life. You, you must not be watching the, the game. You must not watch how my life evolved, how my life played out. And you're telling me that I'm going to be a father of many nations and I don't even have a child. And, and I'm 75. I'm over it. I'm, I'm, I'm almost 80. I'm almost 90. I'm almost 90. I'm almost 100. And guess what? And you tell me I'm going to be a father of many nations and I don't even have a child. God, you telling me I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to be prosperous. You you're telling me I'm going to be this and my bank account uh, is negative. My, ne my bank account is negative $30. You're telling me I'm going to be wealthy. You're telling me that I'm walking in overflow and, and, and Capital One is calling me. The, the credit company is calling me. I ain't got no job. My life is in shambles. Everybody left. Everybody walked out. And you saying that I'm going to walk in a place of overflow? And you're telling me, God, that I'm going to be a champion? And he tells, uh, he tells Abraham, he says, so at the age of 100, God allowed Abraham and Sarah to have a child. His name was Isaac. And now they've been waiting all these years, 100 years, literally over 100 years, and they finally get a child. They finally give a child. And now the first thing that God says, hey, uh, that's that the first thing, you know, after a little bit of time he uh, passes, God says, all right, here's your next set of instructions. I'm, I'm making your father many nations, but I want you to give me the, the one child that you have your only child, and I need you to sacrifice it. Your only child, and I want you to sacrifice it. That's like God saying, hold up, I'm going to make you a millionaire, but I need you to give me your last $5. I need you to give me your last. I'm going to make you so popular. But I need you to cut off some of your friends. Hold up, God, how am I be popular? And my name is going to be great. But yet you tell me to cut my circle off. I says, I just need something to work with in order to get you to your next level. See, when you declare that this is your championship season, it's going to cost you something. When you declare that this is your championship season, your championship season is going to cost you. Every champion that you see out there, NBA, golf, NFL, college, whatever, it cost them time. It cost them energy. It cost them resources. It cost them, uh, cost them time with spending with friends. It cost them time with spending in, with family. It cost them some tears. It cost them some, some highs. It cost them some lows. That's why, I watch this, y'all. I keep trying to tell y'all, the championship is not won when you see them raising up the trophy. That's the evidence of all the work that they put in in the offseason when they declared that this is my championship season. 
when you see them hoisting the trophy, that's the gratification of all the work that they put in. So God tells Abraham, I need you to give me your only son. Hey, I know I told you you're going to be a father of many nations. And you would think that God would be adding to Isaac, I mean, Abraham at that point. But he's telling Abraham, I need you to subtract. And God says, when you're ready to, when you're ready to blow up your weight and grow into your championship season, there's going to be a season where you're going to have to subtract. God takes, he tells, so Abraham gets up the next day to go take Isaac to go sacrificing. The Bible says that what? Isaac, to me, Abraham took two of his men, which signifies that there were more than two. He just was able to bring two out of the bunch. And God says, even when I'm going to take you to your next level, there's going to be some relationships that you're going to have to separate from. Only two people, a few people are going to be able to walk in your new season. Only a few people are going to be able to walk. So watch this. When you fall out with people, don't trip, don't cry. Don't fall out. Don't have tantrums. It's part of the point. So everybody can't go with you. Even when Moses went up to go speak with God, only a certain amount can go to a certain, some had, was able to go to the foot of the mountain, and then some were able to go midway through the mountain. But when Abraham, not when hey, Moses, when Moses went to go talk to God personally, he had to leave some people behind. Even Jesus, Jesus had 12 disciples, only three was able to go to the top, and only one he, he, confide, he confided in. So when it's time to go to your next level, watch this. Don't trip when God begins to separate. Don't trip when, 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 when your crew starts to fall to the side. That just means everybody can't go. The Bible says lay aside every weight. But the Bible says lay aside every weight. In other words, you can't ascend if you got too much baggage. You can't reach your destination when you got too much baggage. That, that's why these airlines is robbing people. Watch this. That's why the airlines rob people but by bringing extra baggage. So if you want to bring extra baggage, guess what? They're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it. Why? Because the airlines understand in order for us to reach our maximum level, our maximum speed, we got a weight limit. God, am I talking to somebody? That means everything can go. That means everything can't go when it's time to get to your next level, when it's time to get to your championship season, even in sports. That's why they cut rosters. That's why they reduce the size of rosters. Why? Because everybody's not equipped to go to your championship. That's why they make trades. That's why to be in the draft, only select people. Why is that? It's because it takes a special type of person to be committed to the vision, to be committed to the game plan that's going to help get us to the championship. So God tells Abraham, hey, only bring two. And then when Isaac, Abraham, and his men got to a certain point, even I, even Abraham had to say, all right, me and the young boy, we're going to go higher. That means y'all going to stay. I need y'all to stay. Just me and the boy going to go. So even in the process, God says, I'm going to trim the fat. I'm going to trim the fat. God fussed at me uh, not long ago. He said, son, you got too much level of anointing to be big. He said, you're going to have to trim even the physical fat that's on your body. Because where I want to take you, you got to be healthy. Where I want to take you, you have to be healthy. Your physical style, your physical ability will be a testimony to minister to others. So, so God is saying, he's saying, Tisa, he's saying this. So Abraham, one, he has a title. He has one championship at this point. That's God giving him Isaac. That's one of his victories. So now we can't take away from Abraham that he's a father. That's his one championship. That's his legacy. That's his legacy. That's his one. That, that's his, that was his legacy. So now God says, watch this. Now I want to add to you and make you a multiple time champion.
So remember, for those who are just coming in, we're in Genesis 22. We're in Genesis 22. God is saying, I see the moment, and I said this earlier for those who are just coming in, the moment that you become a champion, nobody can dis disassociate your championship from your name. You cannot, nobody. If you went to prison today after being a champion, they have to say convicted felon, champion. They can't take champion away from you. They cannot take champion away from you. So now what God says, I want to make you a multiple champion. So now, Genesis 22 you know, Abraham goes to sacrifice Isaac. Right when he was about to stretch in, 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 in his knife and go ahead and kill Isaac, God yells from the, he yells, hey, uh, 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 Abraham, stop. And he said these words. He said, so Abraham went, took the ram and off. He said, I'm sorry. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. There was behind him. I'm sorry, let me go back. Verse 12. Verse 12 of Genesis 22, and he said, the Lord said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear God. For now, I know that you fear God. And since you have not withheld your son, only your only son for me, because I know that you won't, that you fear me. <clears throat> and I know that you won't withhold anything from me. And I know that you trust me. I know that you, you, you will, if I tell you to do it, you'll do it. Because I know that because of your love, your fear for me, your respect, your faith for me, and that you won't withhold anything from me. He said, don't lay your home, don't lay nothing on, don't lay, don't, don't lay a hand on your son. Verse 13, God says, what I love about God, God makes provisions. God will not tell us to do anything without having provisions in place. Somebody say that God makes provisions. Somebody put that in the chat. To be a champion, God's going to give you provisions. God is going to give you provisions. He says, then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket. He was caught in the thicket by his horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called, he says, and Abraham called the name of this place, the Lord will provide. If God is saying that you're going to be a champion, I'm encouraging you right now to let you know that God will provide. If we follow the game plan, God will provide. <clears throat> If we follow the details, God will provide. If we trust God, God will provide. That's why when we pray, one of the things we have to say, God, what is your will for my life? Because if God gives you his will, God says, I will provide. Even when we pray the Lord's prayer, God, give us this day our daily bread. So if God gives us the gift of this day, guess whose responsibility is to give us the provision for this day. Give us this day our daily bread. God says if you if, if if God is going to wake you up today, guess it's God's responsibility to make sure that you have the provision for today. It is God's provision. So if God if God is saying that I'm going to make the provision, if we trust God, see, watch this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God says, I, God says, I can only provide according to what's my will. So when we operate outside of God's will, it's no longer God's responsibility to provide. But if we ask God, what is his will for my life? Guess what? God says, I'm going to provide. So God says, 
if I'm telling you I'm going to, you're going to be fathers of many nations, guess what? I'm putting all the necessary things in place to make you a father of many nations. If God says, this is what it's going to take to win, I promise you, I'm going to put all the necessary pieces in place if you just trust me and follow the game plan. God says, he says, he says, he said, the Lord will provide as it is said for this, for to this day, the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Verse 15, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham. See, watch this. Abraham's won his first title. His first championship was when God gave him Isaac. Now God says, I'm about to make you a multi, a, mul a multiple champion, multiple champion. He says, you will have multiple titles. Who's ready for multiple champion who's ready for multiple in wealth multiple in resources multiple in wisdom a continuous victory remember genesis 26 and 12 genesis 26 and 12 says we reaped in the same year that we sowed a hundredfold that's his first victory the moment that he reaped the first year that he sold. And then God says he blessed it to, for him to prosper. So not only did he break even, but he also prospered. That's the second title. The third championship is, this is we're in multiple now, is that the Bible says that he, 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 he continued prospering. That's multiple titles. And then God says, until you became very prosperous. In other words, God says, watch this. I'm not just trying to give you a one hit wonder victory. Yes, you're a champion. You're a champion. But now it's time to add multiple six time champion, four time champion, five time champion. A continuous champion. Every time you wake up, your feet hit the ground. You just won. You just walked into another season of victory. So he says then at verse 15 in Genesis 22. Verse 15, it says, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven woo, and said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. That God, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing. You have not withheld your last bit of resources. You've not withheld your, la your last son. You've not withheld uh, that last piece of energy. You've not withheld that last bit of praise. You, you've not withheld that last bit of worship. You've not withheld that last bit from me. Your only, the last bit that you had, you didn't withhold it from me. Verse 17, he says, blessing I will bless you. God says, blessing, I will bless you. Blessings, man, I'll bless you. Blessings, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants. He says, blessings, that's not a problem. I will bless you. And multiplying, that's not a problem. I will multiply your descendants, not only you, Abraham, but I will multiply those that come after you, Abraham. As the stars of the heaven and, the, and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. See, when you're a champion, watch this, you have access to the gate of your enemies. What happened when Jesus died on the cross? He went down and watch this. They buried him. He went down into the enemy's camp. And the Bible says that he came back up with the keys to the kingdom and all power in his hands in heaven and in earth. God says, you're even your descendants shall possess 
the gate of the kingdom. I'm sorry, the gates of the enemies. In other words, watch this. We ain't got the word. What we can get, we got access to what's the riches and the wealth that the enemy had. He says, I shall, you, your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. That's why the word says, watch this, y'all. Watch this, that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. God says, I'm giving you access to that. And we are in a season where things are beginning to shift. Ah, the momentum is shifting. You're walking in your new season. This is your game time. You have made a comeback to walk in your championship season. Am I talking to somebody on today? Oh, God, 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 you are walking in your championship season. So not only did Abraham get blessed, but it says, what says, even his descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. He says, verse 18, in your seed. See, this is where he's shifting to being the father of many nations. Verse 18 says, in your seed, I in, in your seed. Who is his seed? His seed is Isaac. Remember, when you look at an apple, you just see one apple. But within that apple, there's an entire orchard in that one apple. Because in that apple, you, you, you see multiple individual seeds. But watch this. There are seeds inside of the seed, which are inside of the seed, which is inside of the seeds, which are more seeds inside of the seeds, and which are more seeds inside of the seeds. It's just to continue. It's almost like looking at one of those mirrors. We got a mirror in front and a mirror in back. And it just has, it's just on, gone, on, gone, on, gone, on, gone, on, gone, on, gone. On gone, and it just keeps going, and that's what God is saying. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Why? Because you have obeyed my voice. God says, because you have followed the game plan, uh, Abraham. Everything that comes out of you, and everything that comes out of the came out of you, what 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 came out of you, and what came out of that that came out of you, it will be blessed. So what are you saying, man of God? Each and every one of us have came out of Abraham. We, each and every one of us, are seeds of Abraham. We are the descendants of Abraham. And because of that, we have a multiplying blessing. We are walking in different levels of our championship. We have multiple championships. We have multiple victories. We are in our championship season. And God wants me to encourage you. This is not even a season anymore. This is all about longevity. This is your legacy. And as long as we follow the instructions of God, we will have multiple championships. Am I talking to somebody right now? Is this blessing you? I just want y'all to get excited about it right now. I want you all to get excited about the season that you're in, the connection that you're connected to. And one of my prayers is, God, everybody that is connected to me, they are walking in the Genesis 26 and 12 season where they not only prosper, but they continue prospering until they become prosperous, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your family, whether it's in your finances, finances, whether it's in your health, whether it's on your job, whether it's in your mind, everything about you, oh, walking blessed, oh, walking blessed, you are, God, I was, I was telling somebody the other day, I'm in a season right now where I truly, and I'm, I promise you, it's all because of God, it's all because of God, I truly believe, Tisa, I am in a season where, I, Vivo, I'm in, I truly believe I am in a season season. Mel, I truly believe I am in a season. Mom, I truly believe I am in a season. Rhonda, Kemba, Vivian, I truly believe that I am in a season where I am invincible. I truly believe that I am in a season. And I say it as humble as I know how. And the reason why I say it that way, because the more I tap into this championship season, 
the more I understand what it unlocks, the more I understand the authority of the anointing, when I more understand the more who I am in God, and the more I understand about purpose, and the more I understand that, I'm like, hold up, God, all this, I had access to all of this stuff. I had access to all of this stuff. truly believe I'm in a season of walking as a champion. And the moment that you win your first title, they have to connect champion to your name. They can't take it away. Go back and I dare you all to Google famous sports names that won champion. And when you find champion right next to the name, Michael Jordan, you'll see champion. Kobe Bryant, you'll see champion. Emma Smith, you'll see champion. Shaq, you'll see champion. Some people you'll see six-time champion, four-time champion, three-time champion. And I'm here to tell you right now, y'all, everybody is not a champion. They have access to becoming a champion. But because of the expense, the cost of being a champion, because of the cost that it that it is expensive, everybody's not willing to pay that price of sacrifice of what it takes to be a champion. Some of us had to have your name drugged through the mud to become a champion. Some of us had to have people walk out to walk into a place of being called a champion. Some of us had to go through hell scares to become a champion. Some of us had to get put out, left to the side of the road to walk in your champion. But because you stood on God's word, you didn't give up. You didn't, you didn't give up. You didn't throw in the towel. Many days we wanted to give throw in the towel. Many days you wanted to go ahead and slit your wrist the wrong way and jump off in front of a curb or in front of a cliff. Cliff. Many. But because you stood on God's word, what they say now, because you stood on business. And what was the business? You stood on God's word. Because you found favor in something that gave you a little bit, gave you one, a second win. Because you believed and you trusted God's word. God says, what did he, what, watch this, watch this. Because God told Abraham, because you have obeyed my voice. Because you have trusted my word. When everybody ridiculed you, when everybody laughed at you, when people walked out, walked away. Now, some people will have to leave. And it's not a negative thing, but it's all in how he left. Because we all left somewhere to get to where we're at now. I want to encourage you all. Champion. The fact that you opened up, yo, I'm so glad you popped up because I'll think about you every time I say this statement. Uh, sis, I think about this every time I say this statement. And I don't know if you remember me saying it, but the moment that you open up the doors to your business because God told you to do it was the moment that you became successful in business. I don't care what your books say, and I'm talking to any, I don't care what your books say. If God told you to open it and you opened it, you had success. Remember, it took 
Abraham was 75 years old when God gave him the instructions. He went 75 years without hearing to leave your father, leave this and do all of this stuff. I'm going to make your name great. He got the, he got the word at 75, but he didn't get the manifestation until he was 100. And through that 25-year that span of 75 to 100, Abraham and Sarah, they made some mistakes. They had some highs. They get made some lows. They operated outside of God's will. They tried to do things on their own. They tried to go rogue. But what's this? But like the prodigal son, but when they got by themselves, they came to themselves. And once you come back to yourself, God says, I'll put you back on the right road to your victory. For those that have been around me for a long time, for those that's been around me for a long time, I want y'all to envision a heart monitor in a hospital. Just close your eyes and visualize a heart monitor in a hospital. See if I can do this. It's been a long time since I used this before. Uh, <laughs> and I hope y'all can see this. I hope y'all can see this. Um, as it comes up. Um, it's been a long time since I've did this. Uh, it's been a long time since I did this analogy using this. All right, so um, I'll stay with me. I know I'm 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 experimenting right now, so I hope y'all can see uh, what I'm about to do. Okay, and on Facebook, I hope y'all can see it. But think about a heart monitor. Goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Right now, you you have some lows in your life right here. You have some lows in your life right here. But then God gave you some victories up here. You have some lows in your life right here. But then God gave you some victories right here. You have some lows, victories, lows, victories, lows, victories, lows. Let me put that, let me bring that back up. <laughs> and it's almost like a heart monitor God showed me it was like beep 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 he said God God says yeah you, you didn't have some promote all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord beep no job New job, write up at the job, promotion at the job, money funny, pay raise, children tripping, children come home. The light bill came, provision to pay it. Ooh, am I talking to somebody? And God says, as long as you have this, you have life. He said, the fearful part is when your heart monitor does this. So embrace the all things work together for those that love the Lord. But as long as you don't have this, God says you still got chance. Yeah, I, I know you haven't fulfilled the vision for the last in, in, in your life, but God says I'm giving you another opportunity. I'm giving you another opportunity to get it right. To get it right. To get it right. I want to encourage you all. It's not this whiteboard, but. <laughs> oh, boy. That's what I get trying to explore new things, right? <laughs> That's what I get trying to explore new things. Here we go. <laughs> That's what I get trying to start new, explore new things. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to us, to you all? 
The, the God says. I know Rondo over there cringing. Oh, Lord, Pastor about to try something new. <laughs> and I just want to encourage you all. This is your championship season. This is your championship season. Embrace the championship season. What is God telling you? Remember, I want you all, and I'm encouraging you all to do this. Our foundational text for this entire championship season is Genesis chapter 26, verses 1 through 5. The foundation is verse 12. You know, if you ever watch any of my logos, you'll see in a logo, it actually has the foundational text, what it is. If you're looking under the Game Time logo, you will see where it says, Whatever the scripture, that's our foundational text. This is your championship season. This is, and I dare you all to claim it. I promise you, this is not a cliche. This is not a cliche. There's something that sounds good, something that sounds cute. This is your championship season. When we are following God's game plan, God says there's levels to your le levels of anointing. I want to take you from just being a champion to a multiple time champion. And that's what we watch with Abraham's life. Why? Because he followed the instructions of God. I'll say this and I'll continue to say it. When we first started teaching on this series of championship season, when God, y'all know we taught a whole year on comeback season. God said, I would have never or we would have never had to experience a comeback season if we follow the game plan. What has God told you? What is the plan that God has laid out for you? What is the plan? What is the plan that God has given you? I challenge you all. Every morning when you wake up, <clears throat> ask God in your prayers, what is your plan for me to win the day? What is your plan for me to win the day? Challenge you all. What do you want me to sow at? Who do you want me to bless? Who do you want me to pray for? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to accomplish? What is your plan? for the day. But where about tomorrow? What is your plan for me to win today? Don't worry about taking L, taking losses yesterday. But God, what is your plan for me to win the day? And I will say this to you all. Um, one of the things that I've had to learn, excuse me, one of the things that I had to learn when it's time to win, in order to win, you have to go through those self-analysis. What is it that I'm doing wrong? What are some things that I can do? Some of us, we might have to get with coaches. We might have to get counseling. We might have to get some inner healing. We have to get some deliverance. We have to go through these things. Why? Because we don't want to take old behaviors, old wounds, old spiritual hurts, uh, old spiritual mindsets into new relationships. We don't want to take them into new business. We don't want to take them into new seasons. We don't want to take them into different new places. We don't want to take those things. So, <clears throat> new places. And the reason why we don't want to take them into new places, because it will be, it will contaminate, it'll be too toxic in your new season. It will be too toxic in your new environment. Because watch this, you'll still deal with internal fights within yourself. You'll have a war and it will happen. It's going to contaminate the war. It's going to contaminate the assignment that God gives you. 
That's why, that's why we say you can't put new wine in old wineskin because it will contaminate the, the new wineskin. It will contaminate what's already in there. So what do we have to do? Part of the process of winning, you have to go ahead and, 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 and detox yourself and get some inner healing, get some counseling. Confront some old demons that's inside of you. Oh, they real. They real. That's a part of you have to not only there's people that you're going to have to leave behind, but there's also some old you that you got to leave behind. There's going to be some old you that you got to leave behind. Because the old you will kill the new the new place you're going to. <clears throat> that's why when God told and I hadn't dealt with this. That's why when God told Abraham to, to get out of that land that's familiar with that you're familiar with and Abraham tried to bring Lot with him. Lot was not supposed to go. And I, God gave me this revelation. He said, in order to get a lot, you must be willing to get rid of a lot. In order to get a lot, we must be willing to get rid of a lot. And so God is saying, there's some lots that's still in us that we got to get rid of. Some old childhood hurts. Some of us can't. The reason why we can't walk wealthy is because we're holding on to old broke mindsets. And we're trying to bring our old broke mindset into a God revel into a God environment of wealth. And the reason why we can't get ahead with our finances is because we're still trying to bring broke mind into wealth mind. And so now what's happening is that's why you're getting frustrated. Remember, I talked about how storms are created. Storms are created because you're trying to occupy. You got two forces trying to occupy the same space, hot air, cold air. And so now because they're trying, they're fighting for that same space. So you got broke mindset, rich mind and God in wealth mindset, they're fighting. And that's why you get frustrated so quick when it's trying to get your money on point. Why? Because you're still trying to bring poverty into prosperity. You're trying to bring uh, uh, health. Oh, oh, okay. I might stop this part of the message because now we're talking about health. <laughs> you're, trying, you're, trying, you're, you're trying to live healthy, but yet you're still bringing in a unhealthy mindset. So guess what? We work out for a day or two, and then we stop working out for a day or two because we, we messed around and brought unhealthy mind to a healthy place. And what happens when you bring something unhealthy into something that God de de desires for it to be healthy, guess what? It makes the entire atmosphere toxic at home. It makes it toxic in, 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 in your finances. It makes it toxic at his job. And then, and then, so those are things we have to do in order to walk in our championship season. It's not all about you wake up one day, woo, I won championship. No, you got to put work in. So even when athletes, when athletes, what happens in that off season, they're getting themselves in shape. They're breaking down the old fast. They're breaking down the, because uh, when you sometimes, what, what happens with athletes, they, they 11 months out of the year, they create all these great habits of working out, exercising. They create new disciplines. <clears throat> and then after the season's over, they take some time off. They eat whatever they want to eat. They live whatever they want to live, how to live. They drink what they want to drink. They, they just live, they get lazy. A lot of the behavior. So what happened is when they get back into the all season, back into the flow, <clears throat> now they have to work out more and create a whole new cycle and a whole new discipline. Why? Because they have to tear down the old habits so that understand how to shape them can't be a champion. We'll, we'll talk, we'll do a little bit more with that. <clears throat> um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. <clears throat> we thank you. We honor you, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. We thank you for everything that you poured out. And I pray that, Father, we did exactly what you wanted us to do. We pray that that was a fresh fragrance to your nostrils. 
We pray that it was a fresh fragrance to your nostrils, Father. And I pray that these words that we release have activated those, those to walk in their new authority. They walk in their new anointing, Father. They walk in the victories of being a champion. They claim it, they walk it, they live it, they breathe it. And Father, then they begin to manifest it. And I pray that, Father, that you will speak to them in a way. That you will pour into them, that you will give them everything they need to win. Be the prosperous champion that you called them to be. And so, Father, we thank you, we honor you, I love you, we adore you. We give you praise, we give you honors. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, 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 amen. I pray that this word has blessed you all, man. I'm excited um, about for each and every one of your championship seasons. I'm excited for the season that you're walking in. I'm excited for the victory that you're going to start testifying about. I am so, 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 so excited for what God has for each and every one of us. I, I'm excited. I'm truly excited about what God is doing uh, in your lives. Grab a hold of this, man. Grab these replays. Watch these replays as they come out, whether on Facebook, um, those that get it from Zoom, get it. If you're on YouTube, follow us, like, subscribe, and share the pages out um, what God is doing um, in this championship season. Um, just a couple quick announcements. If, if God has put it in your heart to sow into what we're doing, though, uh, to, to, to sow into the ministry, to sow in what we're doing, um, I encourage you, you can do that by one or two ways. You can do it via cash app, dollar sign, E-M-P-M-I-N, dollar sign, E-M-P-M-I-N, or you can do it via uh, PayPal at rpbible1 at yahoo.com. Uh, you can sow in those ways. Um, for those that continue to sow, man, I just thank you. I pray an above and beyond measure return into your lives. Those that sow desire, I just pray rapid increase um, into your lives. I pray that things are broken off that are holding you hostage and that wealth begins to find you. Um, those things that you're just believing God for will begin to give, give you downloads and uh, wisdom and things of that nature on how to continue to walk in your championship season. Um, Monday, don't forget Monday. We've actually changed the time. We moved it from 7.30 to 7 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time to be a part of our Monday Monday evening book study group. Um, the Principles and the Power of Vision by Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, this book has been a blessing, man. I'm just watching the scales just fall from the eyes of the people <clears throat> as we continue to walk in our purpose. If you say, you know what, man, of God, we do it Monday nights at 7 p.m. now, Eastern Standard Time via Zoom. Uh, we don't do it on any other platform. But if you say, you know what, man, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this book study. Um, feel free. You can inbox me. We'll add you to the mailing list. Those that are on Zoom, you can inbox me. We'll put, we, you know, we'll add you on the mailing list, uh, the email list, um, where you can get the link and everything. And God just told us we're not rushing through it. God just told us to take our time, take our time. Um, <clears throat> yes, yes, to take our time um, to uh, uh, to walk through this book. Um, I meant my mentor, my brother, gave it to me. Um, uh, probably about five years ago and it's a part of my regular rotation now um and it really helps it speaks to your vision it speaks to your purpose it speaks to you and we have some open discussion we had open dialogue about it um and so some some people get left out there by themselves to talk about them no, just these and i'm being that me being petty but we would love to have you guys to be a part of this um, but those that are on Facebook, please, encourage, we encourage you, welcome to come in, just inbox me, and we'll put you on the email list uh, other than that. Next week, we will do communion, so be prepared to do communion with us uh, next week. Um, so other than that, man, I love you all to life. I honor you all. I pray that you all have an amazing day. Thank you all for the birthday love, man. Now, for those that don't know, my birthday was this past Thursday. We turned the big four nine. Yay. We turned the big four nine. And I thank God um, that he gave me another opportunity to, to circle the sun one more time. Um, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. All. Yeah, I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I, I take it. Um, but yeah, we had an opportunity to celebrate. So all the birthday love, all the shout outs, um, text messages, the gifts, um, the love that you all shared. I, Thank you all so much, y'all. 
truly made me feel special um, for uh, my birthday. And so I love you all to life um, and looking forward to doing it again. And I pray for the seeds that are coming through. I pray increase. I pray above and beyond return back into your lives, your business, your family, um, <clears throat> um, everything that you set out to do. Um, I pray increase upon you. Um, rapid return, rapid return, rapid return. Guys, I love you all. Thank you all. We'll be back here next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Zoom, Facebook, 10 after 10 next Saturday. Um, and then Monday, we'll see you all 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our um, Power Make book study. So love you guys. Have an amazing day. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe out there. Love you to life. God bless.